Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Second MRI, and this is a 40-year-old female who injured her wrist several months ago. The pain didn't go away, so she finally went to her orthopedic surgeon, and he ordered some x-rays to see if there was a fracture, and there was no evidence of a definite acute fracture, but there was abnormal increased density in this bone. This is the scaphoid bone along the radial aspect of the wrist. Normally bones are more homogeneous, a little bit lower in density. You can see how uniform this is. This was increased in density right in this region and kind of patchy signal, I'm sorry, patchy density here distally. So the doctor thought maybe there was a prior injury, maybe a fracture and did an MRI to look at that. So this is a view that is very sensitive to marrow edema. And on this view, we see that the scaphoid bone here does have some brightness in the distal pole. So this is the proximal pole here. This is the mid pole. And this is the distal aspect here, distal pole. And we see that there's some brightness around, a little bit of fluid around that scaphoid bone, brightness here. Looks a little irregular instead of being nice and smooth. So this is an old fracture. You can see a transverse band of subtle low signal here through the scaphoid waist. It looks like this was a prior fracture through the mid scaphoid and then some little bit of uh, bone deformity distally related to fracture and there's some patchy marrow edema. So this is incompletely healed. Now the proximal pole looks pretty normal on this one. On this one it looks pretty normal, maybe a little bit of increased density, but nothing obvious going on on this view. But we have one other view that um, shows fatty marrow as bright. And so this is the view, it's called a T1-way view. All the bones have fatty marrow, so they will have uniform bright signal like the radius here, like the ulna here, all the carpal bones, capitate bone, lunate bone look very homogeneous and bright except for the scaphoid bone. And the distal scaphoid bone where we saw the subtle deformity where from a fracture, there's some patchy low signal. This is where the marrow is abnormal and it's low. This is where there's a fracture that's incompletely healed. And the whole proximal half, the proximal pole is uniformly low in signal, so no normal marrow. The marrow is replaced. And this is repla replaced by bone sclerosis, increased bone density. So this is a sign of what we call avascular necrosis or death of the bone. It, the blood supply got compromised and the bone died, so this dark area is a dead bone avascular necrosis or osteonecrosis. And the scaphoid bone is unique in that the blood supply starts distally and it comes proximally. Most blood supplies start proximally and go distally. Proximally go distally with the scaphoid bone, the blood supply starts distally and comes back proximally. So if there is a fracture or injury um, where the blood vessel that comes along uh, to feed the proximal pole is compromised, Sometimes people have two uh, blood vessels, sometimes one. When the blood supply is compromised from a prior injury, the proximal pole can die like this from lack of blood supply. And again, we call this avascular necrosis or osteonecrosis, very serious condition. Again, it can be hard to see on x-ray, uh, but MRI, very easy to see on this T1-weighted image. In the initial phase, it'll be bright with marrow edema, and then as it goes on to become chronic, it'll become dark like this and uh, has reactive bone sclerosis or increased bone density where it, it once had marrow. Thank you very much.